Hey, I'm Matt Moran, this is Arrogant Sage Media. Today we're gonna to go over document assembly in Google Apps Script. So I've, uh, um, now I've done document assembly for 25 plus years with Microsoft Word and connecting with a lot of disparate databases. As we've been moving more to Google Cloud Platform, um, I'm doing the same with Google Docs and there are some, a lot of similarities and a lot of differences. Um, but you can do some amazing things with Google Apps Script. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a quick demonstration of what this is going to do. Then we're going to break down the code um, line by line, basically. So let's take a look at what we have here. So I've got a folder structure and I have this contract assembly control sheet. That's just basically this spreadsheet that has contractor name, subcontractor, and fees. Now I've taken some basic fields most document assembly is significantly more complex. Um, we can also use a variety of data sources. We don't have to use Google Sheets, but it's a really simple way to enact uh, document assembly very quickly. So what you see here is I've just got some contractor names, subcontractor and fees, just three fields basically. And then I've got a column here called generate, and that's just going to, um, we're gonna put a yes in there if we want it to generate a contract for this pair of contractors and put the fees in. And then what we have here is we have our template. This is just makes no sense. If you look at this contract, I just downloaded some contract language from uh, you know a generic templated website. And um, what we have in here are a couple fields that we've designated, areas that we're gonna be replacing information. So I've got the contractor name, the subcontractor name, and the fees. Right? And that corresponds with the names of our columns. And that's gonna be important because we're gonna use those as a reference when we're doing a search and replace so that we don't have to, um, we don't have to manually type anything uh, into our code. We can actually just reference the fields up here, okay? So let me show you what it does. We're going to take this second one. We'll put a yes in there. And now what I've done is I've created a folder structure where I have the assembly information. So this is our control sheet that runs it. Here's our template. And then here's where the contracts will end up as they get created. And our goal is to create a contract in a PDF form that ultimately we could email to people. We could automate all of that. We'll do that in a future lesson. Although a prior video I have will show you that. So what it should do when we run this code is it's going to grab the information, it'll iterate through these items, it'll see that there's a yes here, and it will generate a contract with these values, okay? So let's do a quick run of this, and let's go look at our contracts folder. So we should see a Google Doc appear, and then a PDF immediately following. There you go, it's done. And if we look at the PDF, we see that Roofing Partners, Delivery Service Inc. have been replaced and the value 3575, right? So this corresponds with Roofing Partners, Delivery Services Inc. and generate this contract, okay? So now we're gonna break down the code. Let's take a look at what's going on there. So once again, we've got this generic contract and our assembly sheet, and here's what the code looks like. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab the contractor sheet and we're going to use the spreadsheet app, get the active sheet and get our contractor agreements, which is this tab here. And then we're going to get the contractor data and that's just grabbing all the value in the sheet using get data range and get the display values. And we want the display values because we have dollar figures here. We don't just want it to bring numbers into our document. And then we grab our template file and we do that by ID. I'm using drive app to get that because we're going to do some file manipulations. We also grab our contract folder. Now, where do we get these numbers from? We get these from up here in the URL. That's our easiest way to just grab these. That's our uh, contractor agreement all the way to there. That's the ID. And when we look at the folder, very similar. We're in the contracts folder. Here's our contract folder ID. So that's where we got those two numbers. So we grab the contract template, the contract folder. 
um, I get the date, the current date, and then I create a prefix using some elements of that date, the year and the month, but I pad it with a zero. If it's less than uh, 10, it's going to be zero, one, zero, two, and that just allows us to order when these contracts were created in a more logical fashion. So I create that prefix with a little dash at the end, and we're going to see how it names the file in the end. So now we have our contract data, and when you use get display value, that's going to bring over an array. We've talked about this. The array will be every value from here to here, and it's kind of an array of arrays. The first array, zero, will be the headings. Um, the array value one will be uh, an array of this value, this value, and so on. So that's what that brings over. And we'll look at that. We're gonna look at it in the debug console again. So we're looking at it line by line. And so grabs that information, has the contract data, and it's now going to iterate through every row in that contract data. And the first thing it's gonna do is get, it's going to say if the first time, the first iteration, as it iterates through, it's gonna evaluate the first column, which is of course array element zero, to see if there's a yes in there. So of course, it'll always bypass the headings. We don't have to worry about manually kind of skipping that row, because that's not gonna be equal to yes. So it's not gonna act on that. And <clears throat> what it does for every time that it finds a yes, is it then makes a copy of our uh, subcontractor agreement and it names it with the file prefix and also the first val the value from the what is the second column the first array element so the value of the contractor name so when we have a um, when we have a contractor it's going to be year dash month dash bills plumbing that's going to be the name of our file good enough so comes through gets that and then it opens up the document by the ID that it got from here so it created a file element and was able to grab the ID from that using the get ID and now we open the document with that and then we grab the body of the document that's just all of our text and we do a text replacement here where I use these field uh, designators just um, you, could, you could use any that would be logical and that also don't mess with things like um, uh, specialized replacement fields, you know, backslashes, things like that. So something that is not going to confuse the replace text at all. And what I do is I look at the first element corresponding rows to get my values. So once again, our fields can match all of this information. And we could actually make it even more dynamic if we wanted to. We could just have it iterate through and we could continue to add fields dynamically and it could iterate through each of the columns inside of our array that iterates through the rows, right? So that would be an even more dynamic way to do it, but I don't do that here. But either way, I go through and for the array element zero, column one or, you know, element one, it's going to replace it with the value of our iterated array element. So um, when it gets down to this yes here, for instance, that's what it's gonna, it's going to take this value and replace this value in the uh, contract. Um, we close and save the document. Uh, you know, if you waited long enough, the document would actually could end up being saved, but you want to make sure that the document itself and all that text is then saved. Because uh, if you run it without this, it'll often just have the field values reference the it will not have replaced the data. And then what we do is we take that document and I move it to the contract folder. And then I grab a this get as, which grabs a blob um, as a PDF. And then I create in the contract folder, I do a create file of the data that we pulled here. And I set the name to the file prefix. Same thing we did up here and the contract data, but I add PDF to the end. So that's how it happens. And now let's go through and look at the code run and see what happens here. So first thing we'll do is we'll change which contract it's going to create. We'll create these two. And now to make things easier, we would of 
course, add something like a uh, a console control console where we kick this off. But either way, we'll look at that in just a second. We'll we'll create that. But what we're going to do is we're just going to go through this, and actually we're just going to return one for the time being, just so that we can get through this kind of quickly. And I'm going to set a breakpoint as we enter our loop. And let's debug this. So as it stops here, let's look at some of the values of our contract data. So the first thing is our contract data. Remember, this is where we have the display values. Here's our array of arrays, and it's four elements long. So we could see that corresponds with the four rows that we have in our sheet. And if we look at array element one, it's an array of with a with an array of the uh, the various headings. So generate contractor name, subcontractor name, and fees. And then we, if we look at the rest of the data, it's our rows related to the individual row items. So we've put a yes in the first column, so we can see that reflected here. But in all the other columns, there's nothing in array element. Um, zero for any of those. So let's take a look what happens here. Our first time through, I is going to be, well, it's undefined until we loop into here. So let's just go through. So now it's equal to zero. So that's going to return for us the first row of this data. And let's go through. It's going to check to see if element 0, 0 has a yes, meaning the first column of the first element, which is going to be this, the word generate. And that's not going to be yes, so it's going to bypass that. Now it's back up here evaluating the second time. I is going to iterate to the next value. Now it's going to be value 1. And now we, when we come down to contract data, array element 1, and element zero of the subarray, is that equal to yes? So if we look at the contractor data, we see that, of course, it is yes. So it comes into our loop, and here's what's going to now make a copy of our document. Now look, as I do this, we can go back over here, and there, there's our document. It's been created in its temporary location. Nothing's been replaced in there. If I open this now, it looks just like the template. All right. So we grab the we grab the document by ID in the document app, and then we grab the body. And here's where we start replacing the text. So we're going to replace contract data zero one, which is uh, with the brackets around it. Contract data zero one contractor name with contractor data one, because I is now one, column one, or array element one, which will be Bill's plumbing. And all the way through. So that's gonna take all of our columns and replace them. So let's just iterate through that. Now we're gonna save and close that document. And once again, if I were to stop it here and take a look at it, it now has our information in there. So everything's been replaced, all the uh, fields that we've wanted to replace. And now we're going to move it into the contracts folder. Now it's gone. Let's go to the contracts folder. There it is. And it's going to grab the blob element as a PDF. And then it's going to use, and we're going back and forth between using the Drive app and Spreadsheet app and the Document app. We're using all of them here. So when you run it the first time, if you grab this code and you set things up, um, it's going to uh, require you to authorize, of course, as it always does. So now it's going to create the file from that blob in this contracts folder. So we should have Bill's Plumbing should now suddenly become a PDF when we go to the next line. And there we go. Now it's going to iterate through all the other items, but they don't have a yes, so they're not going to um, create any new documents. So I just end up 
finishing that and there's our new PDF. All right, so great, everything works. So now what we could do, and this is often what I do for clients, we create some kind of control sheet. I'm gonna move it as the first sheet. We're gonna call it control sheet, or something like that. I'm going to turn off grid lines. Now I would normally create some kind of interface in here. Maybe I put some kind of background and other information and there's usually a few other buttons and ways to gather data from the client. But either way, we're just going to do something very simple. We'll create a little gray background. Then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to go insert drawing. I'm going to grab this shape because it looks buttony to me. I'm going to kind of go from one to about four, maybe half an inch and change the color. generate contracts and let's center align that good enough and so this is going to be our button save and close turns it right to the sheet and then what we're going to do is right mouse click on it we're going to grab our function name generate contracts assign script Now we've got it assigned here, and we would, of course, once again, we would move this to wherever it has to be moved with whatever and for other information we have, and maybe we have something like this. Contract generator version 2.0. Here's our amazing interface. And what I'm gonna do is get rid of these contracts. And now let's go to our contract assembler. So we'll look at the contract field and we're gonna kick off our code by clicking that button. And now we'll just sit here looking at the contracts field, and see what happens. We should see one document appear. And that's really gonna be it because we only had those, but the nice part is we can come back here and Remove that and put a yes and a yes here. Go to our control sheet and voila. Now we could of course change those values and have it prompt them to select which contractors they want to choose. And we might do that, um, show you by creating a list box or check boxes, whatever. But either way, this is going to generate all of our contracts with all the corresponding data. Of course, if you have any questions, hope you find that interesting. Uh, but if you have any questions, uh, leave a comment on the video or uh, send me an email on my website. Either way, uh, all the code's right there for you. You can generate that stuff and probably have it working.